Hello everyone, welcome to my first ever formal tutorial style video on Valorant. And today I'm going to be covering more mechanical and more physical parts of the game, like your setup or in-game settings, etc. So that's just for this video, but later down the line, I'm definitely going to be doing some more like fundamental understanding videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for that. But let's jump right into this part. So uh, I'm going to first talk about the biggest question that everyone asks me. Tyson, what is the perfect sense? Or Tyson, what's the optimal sense? Tyson, what's your sense? Expiration point sense in the chat when I'm streaming on Twitch. You'll, you'll see it all the time. And a lot of people ask me that. And I've used like... I've basically used low, medium, high senses, so I know what fits for me. I think I'm more of a higher sense player myself. I'm going to talk about quickly the pros and cons of high sense versus low sense. And it's actually, wait, it's not even that deep. It's pretty easy. So when you're using a low sense, you're basically giving up speed for precision. And then when you're using high sense, you're basically giving up precision for speed. Now in the right hands, both senses can be pretty good for whatever type of style of player you are. If you're more flicky and you like to run in and flick your mouse around, you're probably gonna be a high sense player, right? But if you're more of a methodical, slow aimer and you like making sure that you always hit your shots, you have a high headshot percentage, stuff like that, I would definitely say that a low sense would probably fit you just game style wise. Like I said before, like sensitivity, it's more personalized. Like there is no perfect sense. So you should just find out what fits for you and what fits for your style of aiming and your style of play. So one method I really, really like using for sensitivity, like finding your sensitivity, I'd say, is actually the PSA method, which is the perfect sense approximation method. And basically you're gonna be taking the EDPI of 280. So the reason why I choose 280 is because 280 is around the average EDPI of pro players. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your actual DPI. And so uh, personally, I use 1600 DPI, right? Doing the EDPI is 280 and you divide it by whatever your DPI currently is. So you could be using 400, 800, 1600, something weird, I'm not sure. But I personally use 1600, so I would like divide by 1600, right? And I would find this number. Now this is gonna be the base sense that you're gonna be using to find out what your approximate sense is. So, uh, I would highly recommend you go onto Google and search up PSA method calculator. And there's a lot of different websites you can see. Like I can see the perfect sense approximation method and it's a starting sensitivity. So I'm going to put out 0.175. Uh, obviously, it's just going to round out to 0.18 because I'm on a higher DPI. So I, I would say if you want more of like an actual accurate result, maybe you would want to lower your DPI to like 400 or 800, something like that. 1600, I'd say is getting into like the higher end. Like not many players are using 1600, but some are starting to change like myself. And there's really no advantage to using a higher DPI other than like very, very small milliseconds that won't even make a difference really. Yeah, so starting off, you have the, the PSA met method calculator right here. You put in the sense. Now, what I want you to do is you're going to go into a death match, uh, unrated, spike rush, any Thing like that where you're actually playing a game and you're actually aiming against real players now i would say the range uh you could kind of figure out what you're gonna be doing but something that's really important with your sensitivity is you're gonna have to be able to 180 you're gonna have to be able to react to different stuff you're gonna want to make sure that you're not getting tired throughout a game you have to kind of consider stuff like that when you're when you're actually like finding your sense of playing so i'm just gonna hop into the range right now because i don't want to actually do all the dms and take the time but what you're essentially gonna do is you're gonna start with you're gonna start with the lower one or the higher one whatever one you want to choose but you want to do one and then the other and whatever one you feel is more natural to you or whatever one comes like easier for you so let's say that you have like a really small mouse pad for example surely that the lower sense might be too slow for you and you might just pick the higher one but that's based on your setup and the way you play probably if you have a small mouse pad you like to use your wrist more and stuff like that and that's just kind of how you develop your own personal aiming style. And I think it's really good that you keep your aim all natural and you don't really have to think about it. And a lot of pro players actually, when they're playing the game, they don't have to subconsciously think about their aim constantly. That's what you want to strive to achieve. You want to make sure that your aim becomes second nature and it kind of feels like breathing for you, where you can actually focus on fundamental parts of your game while your body and your mind kind of does the aiming for you. So right here, so let's say that I'm going to play between 0 0.09 and 0 0.26, right? Uh, obviously, on 0.09 i'm gonna find it a lot harder to 180 actually it's gonna be really really hard for me to 180 whereas 0.26 which is kind of already similar to what my sense is i'm gonna find it a lot more natural for me and i feel like i can flick around like i'm going to shoot some some bots or i'm going to like shoot a dm i'm gonna find it a lot easier for me to maneuver in game and also not get tired throughout the game 
And I think that's really, really important because actual, when you, if you use too low of a sense, you could definitely feel fatigue after a long period of gaming. And obviously um, you, you don't really want to experience that. Now, basically when you're going to pick, so let's say I pick higher, lower, higher, lower, or higher, stuff like that. I'm, I'm just picking some random ones right now. And I'm just going to see that once you go through seven different iterations, you're going to find out what your approximate perfect sense is. That's why it's called the perfect sense approximation. I would highly suggest this method and make sure you try it out if you ever feel like uh, your sensitivity might not be the right match for you. If you have something that's working and you feel really good using it, you don't have to change. I definitely think that sticking with one sense and something that you've gotten used to and something that feels natural to you, you don't ever have to change that, okay? Trust me, I, I change my sense a lot. So that's probably the, that's kind of like speed running the sensitivity portion. I'm obviously doing a more full size video here where I'm actually talking about like everything in game. So now I'm gonna be talking about in-game settings now that the sensitivity part is covered. So in-game settings, I would highly suggest right after you find your sense for video settings for competitively optimal situations. Uh, right now I use windowed full screen, but that's just cause I stream and I use two PCs or two PCs, two monitors. So it gets all weird when I'm trying to alt tab. So that's why I use windowed full screen. But you want to use full screen for the lowest amount of input delay. NVIDIA Reflex, you can just do on or on plus boost, really up to you. Graphics quality, I basically put everything on the lowest. So that's definitely for the video settings, I would say were pretty good. Now for stats, you can show your FPS, but one thing I think is really, really good is actually the shooting error. And what you want to do is you want to do the shooting error with the graph. And now whenever you're playing a game, if you record your footage of your game and you feel like, damn, I should have hit that shot, right? And you look back on the footage and if you see when I'm standing still, it looks like this. But when I move, you see how this one thing is sticking out a lot. Now you can see what the number jumps up to. So when I'm moving, it's 5.25. Now when I'm standing still, it's 0.25. And so when you're recording your game and you're actually looking back on the footage, you can actually see if you need to work on your movement and you actually need to stop more before you shoot. And if you're relying a little bit too much on the RNG of the game to assist you with your aim. So that's what I would suggest for the stats. Crosshair is all preference, just like sensitivity. One thing I do recommend though, is I would say in Valorant that smaller crossers feel like they kind of are more dominant just because the game the hitboxes and the characters move really slow and you have to be more precise with your first bullet compared to other games i would say that valorant is a lot more tap and burst based rather than spray based so that's why i think that smaller crossers is probably reign dominant in a lot of the pro scene right now especially the the crosser that everyone uses is the 1420 but yeah i'm just gonna use whatever i personally like for me and what has been working for me now going up into control so this is more for CS players, but for CS players, right? When you're using an op, you would have to click once, click again, and it would unzoom. Now, one thing that I think is really, really good in Valorant to kind of optimize yourself to be a better op player and to have more full control of your op is actually making sure that, well, it's really up to you if you want to do hold toggle, but I'd highly, highly suggest that you do operator zoom to toggle and you set a key to the toggle zoom level. Now, one thing about Valorant is when you're scoping in, you're not making a scope sound. And that's like a really big thing in CSGO, for example, a game where I came from. And I actually first started off using this method, right? Where I would have to double zoom before I can unscope. Now, the good thing about Valorant and this scope system is now you have more opportunities to actually have full control of your op, right? So if you want to quickly unscope after single scoping, you can. If you want to double scope, but then go back into single scope, you can. You don't have to just cycle through them and go back to like, what the other previous one was. And I think that's a really, really good function that will help a lot of op players. And especially if you get used to it is really, really good. Auto re-enter scope. I would definitely say this is more of a preference right here. The one setting I highly, highly recommend you do is actually having a quip spike on a different key from you spike. Now, the reason being is when you're actually on a bomb site, for example, and if I had them on the same key, if I hold four, if like I wanted to drop it to my teammate, let's say my teammate was one away from an alt, right? and I wanted to give them the spike to actually plant to give them the ult point, I would actually have to jump and press four in order for me to equip the spike without actually like trying to plant. It's actually really nice, right? So rather than having to do that, you can just have a different key for when you actually want to hold the spike in your hand and when you actually want to use the spike. And regardless if the spike is actually equipped, as long as you press four or whatever key you set it to, you don't have to put it in your hand and then use it. You can just hold four or hold the key, let go of it, and you're back to using your rifle. And so it gives you a lot of options to actually like drop the spike. Like if you want to drop it quietly or you don't want to jump and <laughs> equip it like that, which 
which kind of can mess up some situations. So that's something I would highly recommend. Another thing I would definitely recommend is if you go into the minimap size, I want you to bump up this minimap size to the biggest size possible. Now, info is probably one of the biggest parts of Valorant and it's really, really important. So being able to look at your minimap really fast and take a quick glance and then get information as fast as possible to yourself is really important. So having a bigger minimap is really, really good. And also you want to make sure that your minimap zoom is zoomed out just enough where you can see all the map at all times. Uh, obviously for me, I personally like it when my minimap is this size and it also rotates. Now, all preference really, you don't have to do the rotate. You don't have to keep the player centered. I personally do, uh, or not keep centered, but I personally do the rotate and it just feels natural to me. And I'm able to actually find myself uh, around the map better and find out what direction I'm looking in. So that's what I would recommend. And also minimap vision cones, I think is really good because you're able to look at the map and see what your teammates are watching. So let's say my teammates like right here and they're just looking at this angle, right? I can see their vision cone. Now I could be like, okay, so this angle is being held, but they could be along this wall. So the vision cones, I think are really, really good to have as well. So stuff like that. Next up, if you're colorblind like me or you have trouble seeing the red outline, definitely try experimenting with the different enemy highlight colors and use a contrasting crosshair color. I would definitely recommend like for example, I use yellow and blue for my crosshair. So yellow outlines and blue crosshair. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you using like yellow, yellow, just because it could blend into certain environments and stuff like that. So that's what I would recommend. Now, this last one is going to be more of an optional setting. You don't have to use it if you don't want and kind of play with it. See if it helps you with visual clutter on your screen, but it's deciding if you should use left hand or right hand. Now, everyone has a different dominant eye. So you have one eye that's more dominant than the other. And your dominant eye wants to see as much screen as possible with the least amount of gun as possible. So um, an easy way to test this actually is find a distance, uh, distant object, for example, like maybe a doorknob or a webcam. And I don't know, like my webcam, I can do it with my webcam right there. And what you're basically gonna do is you're going to put a circle or you can do a triangle around the item. Now you're gonna take turns closing one eye and then closing the other eye and seeing which eye moves the least. So for me personally, when I close my right eye or when I close my left eye, sorry, my right eye is open, it doesn't move at all. So that means I'm actually right eye dominant. And then when I move my, or I close my right eye and keep my left eye open, it actually moves for me. Yeah, so I'm right eye dominant. So actually it means I should be having my gun on the left side, but I've just used like, I played the game so long and I just always had it on the right ever since playing. So I don't really tend, like, I don't really want to change now. And that's why I'd say it's more of an optional thing. It's not really a deal breaker. It might help you, it might not. Really optional setting that you can test out and see if it's right for you. Monitor settings. So everyone is going to also have a different monitor or uh, we're not all going to be using the same monitor, everyone watching this video. So one thing that I highly recommend also is you adjust your monitor settings to be optimal for you. Now, for me personally, I'm using a Zowie monitor right now and I have a Diacom Premium, which is basically their motion blur technology, which which makes stuff a lot more clearer, which actually does start to make a difference in the 360 hertz range for me. But I had brightness on 50, so my eyes can basically sustain a longer period of gaming. My color vibrance is also at 20, which like I said before, I'm colorblind, so it kind of helps me out a lot. And it helps me, everything pops out to me a lot more. And my my gamma, like I set it to whatever like feels good to me, I put it on to a dark color. Everything for monitor settings is going to be preference, but there's these settings called AMA or overdrive, or stuff like that. I don't, I've response time even, I think is the name of some of them. I'm not too sure exactly what the specs are or like what the, the exact name of the certain monitor settings are, but it basically lets you see the reaction time of the monitor faster. Now, in theory, you want to have the fastest reaction time, right? But there's actually this test that you want to do, which is called the UFO test. And this is something I highly recommend you do if you're adjusting your monitor settings. So uh, as you can see, the UFOs are going on my screen, right? And you want to track the UFO that's on your FPS or your fresh rate. And you wanna make sure that it's not blurry or it's not, it, it doesn't look blurry or it doesn't look like the screen is like 
I don't explain it. It's like overshooting. So there's like ghosting and overshooting. And I think that's like two really big things that can kind of unimmerse you when you're playing and uh, make it a lot harder on your eyes to actually see. So you want to have a nice clear time and see the targets as visually clear as possible. Just I would recommend you go through that. You adjust the settings and see what works for you and what works best for your monitor because everyone here is probably using a different monitor, right? Um, also, if you're using different technologies like Diac, for example, try it with Diac on, Diac off. Try stuff like that and i think that will actually help out a lot yeah so the last thing i'm going to be talking about is nvidia settings and really when you're playing a game and you want to be completely optimal you want to make sure that your game fps is as high as possible and isn't stuttering at all or isn't dropping frames and that's like a really big part if you do notice that you start dropping frames it actually is a little bit better to cap the frames at where you're dropping just because it feels a lot better to play on a consistent frame rate than a constant stuttering frame rate but yeah what i personally do is i just go into nvidia and i set my my preference emphasizing to performance. That's all I do really. And just to make sure that I have a really smooth time gaming and that I have the highest frame rate available to me. All right, so wrapping up this video, thank you everyone for watching. Like I said before, I'm gonna be releasing more fundamental guides on Valorant in the future. This one was just more of like my first ever actual formal guide where I was talking about uh, actual in-game settings. I get asked about that topic a lot. And so I, I know some I know some stuff. I'll just say. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Stay tuned to the channel if you want to see future guides. Leave a comment down below in the comments if you actually think this video helped you at all or you think there's something else that you want me to talk about. I'm definitely going to be looking at the comments for this video. So thank you so much for watching and peace out and have a good day.